In today's video, we are going to be comparing this five-star Copycat Cheesecake Factory Original Cheesecake Recipe to the real Cheesecake Factory Original Cheesecake. But before we do the taste test and see which one is better, let's go a little bit back in time to see how to make this. All right, here we've got all of our ingredients to make our original Cheesecake Factory cheesecake. And I just wanted to mention, I didn't skimp on the ingredients because I wanted to make sure there was no excuse for this not turning out well. So I got Philadelphia cream cheese, which is more than twice as expensive as the great value, um, Daisy sour cream and honey made graham crackers. So we're gonna get started today by putting the oven to 425 degrees. And we're going to be putting a large roasting pan on the middle rack as well as getting a kettle of water onto heat, ready to pour into that when the cheesecake goes in. All right, so next up we've got our 10 inch springform pan here and we're going to be lining the bottom with parchment paper, putting the pan on and then trimming the excess paper top. There we go. All right, now that we've got the parchment in there, we're going to be making some noise. So we're gonna be lining two layers of aluminum foil. The reason is, is we're gonna be cooking this in um, a water bath. I'm not sure if that's what you call it, but something like that. Mm -hmm. And we don't want any of the water to get inside the cheesecake. So we've gotta line this whole thing. And it looks like one layer would actually be enough. Yeah. I went out and bought, um, especially for this, this really long roll of aluminum foil so that we could uh, make sure to cover all the way around the sides. And we are definitely doing that, but I read two different recipes and they both said to double layer it, so I'm gonna do that just to make sure. By the way, we are going to be putting the recipe in the description, so if you guys want to follow along and make this or make this after and see how, after you see how it turns out, um, feel free to go down there and grab the recipe so you can make it too. Okay, time to make the crust. So we're gonna take 20 graham crackers and I'm gonna kind of break them up a little bit to make them easier to go in there. I'm not even sure these are all gonna fit. Oh yeah, I think they will and two tablespoons of sugar. And then we're going to um, blend this in this food processor until it resembles coarse crumbs. There's still some big ones in there. Well, I thought this was supposed to be coarse crumbs, but it is definitely not coarse. It is fine. Fine, fine crumbs. We are gonna go with fine crumbs. Okay. Next up, we are going to take our graham cracker crumbs Possibly. Maybe rotate it the other way. Other way. There yeah, it goes. Yep. Graham cracker crumbs. And it looks like our water on the stove is currently whistling. We're going to pour that in to a separate bowl, as well as three quarters of a cup of melted butter, which we've prepared ahead of time. And then we're going to mix it until it is completely moistened, I believe is yes. what, That's what the instructions say. Overmix. That is completely moistened. So now that's going to go into our springform pan. Just dump the whole thing right in the middle there. And then we're going to be pressing this. Um, and it says to press it really firmly, so we want to get this nice and packed in there. And we're just going to use our fingers to start. And we want we want the crumbs to come up um, to about halfway up this, the middle mm. on the sides, not all the way up. And it says go for about a quarter inch, but I don't know. If we press <laughs> this really firmly, I'm not sure we're gonna have that much, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. I've never actually made a cheesecake before, so this is a new experience. I'm actually really excited about this to see how it turns out. This is actually kind of difficult to get this where it's like all the same thickness everywhere and up on the sides the same thickness. But I think that you actually want that, otherwise it's just not consistent. That's looking pretty good now. That's looking pretty good. It says that you can use um, like a glass with a flat bottom. Um, just make sure to put some butter or you know grease it so that it doesn't stick to everything. So I'm actually gonna do that. Kind of spending a lot of time getting this crust done because I want it to look good when it's done. All right, there it is folks. All done and ready to go. Now we're gonna place the graham cracker crust into the freezer and let that chill while we are getting the rest of the ingredients ready. 
So now that we've got our crust in the freezer, we are going to move on to the interesting stuff, the filling. We're going to start off with five eight ounce blocks of full fat Oops. cream cheese. We've already got three in there. We're going to add another two, as well as a half cup of full fat sour cream. So both of these have to be full fat. You have no skimping on the fat. That's right. After that, we are going to mix these up until what, well combined? It says about two to three minutes. Two to three minutes. <laughs> All right, we've been mixing for about two minutes now, so it should be fully incorporated. Yeah. That looks pretty good, but I did taste it and it did not taste that good. So yeah, next we got to put some sugar in it and the eggs and that will get the flavor up there. Mm -hmm. That's what we want. All right, so next up we've got the cornstarch, the vanilla and the sugar. We've got one and a half cups of sugar going in. There's one. Boy, this is uh, kind of messy. <laughs> cornstarch gets all over the place. Two tablespoons of cornstarch. And the recipe is kind of funny. I don't really understand why cooks do this, but they said three teaspoons of vanilla. Don't people know that three teaspoons is the same, same as one tablespoon? Well, to be honest, I didn't know that, and I actually okay. kind of do this stuff for my job, so <laughs> I uh, make ice cream at an ice cream shop. And yes. so if somebody told me three teaspoons, I wouldn't even know to put a tablespoon. You would just do three teaspoons. But well. now I do. All right, tablespoon of vanilla, and then we're going to go ahead and mix that again for? A certain amount of time. A certain amount of time. Until it's oh. mixed. Beat on low until combined, and it says make sure to pause to scrape down the sides while you go. Okay, so pretty much the same thing we did last time. Correct. Now we're going to take five large eggs and crack them into a separate bowl so that we can whisk them up a little bit. Whisk, whisk, whisk. All right, next we're going to slowly incorporate the eggs while um, the mixer is on low, and it says on its lowest speed. So go ahead and start that. Just add the eggs a little bit at a time. And it says once they're all in there, you mix it for about one to two minutes. Oh. I forgot about that. Oh wow, it is getting nice and silky. Mm. And it is tasting a lot better now. Yay. I can confirm. All right, I'm just gonna kind of scrape the sides down again one more time, but it's pretty much done. And it looks really good, nice and smooth. Oh yeah. And now it's time to get the um, pan of crust, the pan of crust, the crust out of the freezer and put this inside. All right, here's the crust. It's chilled and ready to pour in the filling. Next, place the cheesecake into the pan that's in the oven. Then take your water that's in the kettle and pour that into the pan. And you wanna pour it till it's about halfway up the cheesecake pan. Let that cook for about 15 minutes. Well, not about, for 15 minutes. And then you're gonna drop the temperature of the oven to 350 degrees and let that bake for another 55 to 65 minutes. Now, here's the really important part. You wanna make sure that the center of the cheesecake is a little bit wiggly um, when it's done. So don't just turn on your timer for 55 minutes and take it out. You've got to check it. The cheesecake should be bubbly on the sides, a little bit brown, and the center needs to be wiggly. If the whole thing is wiggly, it's not baked enough yet. And if the center is firm and the whole thing is firm, then it's overbaked. So you really got to watch that and make sure that it's done right so your cheesecake comes out to perfection. Okay, time to check this out. And Oh, it looks like uh, it's still a little bit too jiggly all over. So we're gonna let that cook for a little bit longer. All right, we're gonna go ahead and check our cheesecake again. And let's see, it does still look a little bit jiggly, not too much, but the top of it is looking a little bit brown and I don't want it to cook anymore. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it like that, but we do need to leave it in there um, with the oven turned off for um, about half an hour with the oven cracked open. So. We'll be back in about half an hour to take it out. Okay, after letting it sit for about half an hour in the oven, it's time to take it out of the water bath. And we're gonna put this here on a towel line cooling rack. And then we just go ahead and take the foil off. Now, as you probably noticed, um, the top got a little bit dark and that's because I accidentally um, left it in at 425 for a little too long instead of turning it down after 15 minutes. So it's a little darker than it should be, but um, it, still it still smells really good. Smells and excellent. I think it'll turn out fine. It should be fine. All right, so now we just let this sit here for about an hour to an hour and a half. 
And while it's cooling, let's start on the topping. All right. For the topping, we've got sour cream, vanilla, and white sugar. And oh, it looks like we've got a dog joining hey, us. Hey, buddy. Hello, Alvin. So I'm a little bit disappointed in this mashed.com recipe because the very last thing it says about this is put the remaining sour cream, sugar, and vanilla in. And they're not very straightforward amounts, so you have to go back and figure out what you've already used and do the subtraction, which, you know, it's not that difficult, but why not just put it in the recipe? Anyway, so we've got a cup of sour cream, a teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter cup of sugar that's going in here. The cake has been cooling for over an hour and a half now, so we're going to go ahead and bring it over and spread on actually only two thirds of the topping. It says to leave some extra for finishing touches. That's right. All right, let's go ahead and do that. I don't know, is that two thirds? <laughs> About, let's sure. Let's just see how it looks when right. we get it on there. More, or are we good? Um, I don't want to overdo it. I don't know, maybe maybe like slightly more. Okay, I'll just do a tiny a bit, little more. bit more. That's probably good right there. Gotta get the perfect amount. Perfect amount for the perfect cheesecake. That's right. I'm thinking this is gonna turn out really good because mm -hmm. it looks good and it smells good. And we did give a little bit of, well, I taste tested the topping. Did. Just a little bit, just the whisk, All and right. it sure did taste good. Well, I think we've got our finished cheesecake there, so mm -hmm. now it's just a matter of putting it in the fridge. It is late, so this took us kind of uh, all afternoon, Yeah. Um, which means it needs to cool for uh, chill in the fridge for at least four hours, so we're gonna go ahead and put that in tonight, and then tomorrow morning, we're gonna have cheesecake for breakfast. Oh yeah, <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna compare it to the real Cheesecake That's Factory right, baby. original cheesecake. See which one's better. All right, it's going in the fridge, and we will see you guys back here tomorrow morning. We are back, and we are ready for breakfast, so let's go ahead and take this cake out of the mold and see how it looks. All right, here it goes, and it looks like it came out nice and easily. Ooh, yes. I would say that That's actually good. looks pretty darn good. It does. It turned out really well. So is it time to uh, do some taste test comparison? Yeah, I think finally, working? after all this work, let's go ahead and jump to the taste test where we will compare it to the real Cheesecake mm. Factory original cheesecake. Time to chow down. Right, it's the moment we've been waiting for to actually dig into some of this stuff. This looks really good. Both of them look very appetizing. Mm -hmm. On this side, we've got the actual Cheesecake Factory cheesecake, and over here we've got our copycat recipe. And uh, I don't know, from a look standpoint, um, the Cheesecake Factory one is a little bit taller. Yeah. Um, bigger, thicker. The frosting, or I, what do you call this stuff? The, the topping? topping. Um, is white, whiter. Mm -hmm. And it looks a little more fluffy, whereas the copycat yep. one, the one that we made, is a little more, I called it pasty. I don't think that's really the right word, but what it looks like to me. Yeah, and I would say the crust on both of them is about the same thickness. Yep. Um, and the filling, the actual cheesecake, mm -hmm. is a little smoother on the Cheesecake Factory one. And it also looks a little bit more fluffy, whereas ours looks more dense. Yeah. So, I don't know, should we All go right. for it? Oh, you wanna start over man. here or over there? Let's start with the real Cheesecake Factory. Real Cheesecake Factory. So we know the standard. All right, grab a bite. Oh boy. Okay, we've been waiting for this. Oh, oh no. <laughs> ah, don't drop it on the copycat. It's a little soft. That, that is like, that is some really good cheesecake. Mm. Yep, soft, airy. Wow. Um, very tasty. Dang. Um, I don't taste the has, crust a whole lot though. You know what I kind of taste? Almost like there's powdered sugar in there. Hmm. Just has that sort of taste. I didn't mm. get any crust on yeah. the last one, so I don't get an excuse to get another bite. The crust just looks actually really thin now that we cut mm -hmm. through it. Um, um, yeah, I don't taste the crust that much. <clears throat> but I mean, that's a great cheesecake though. It's very, very good. It's, yeah, I knew very that was tasty. gonna be good, but. Let's see about the one that we made. I'd probably give that a seven out of 10. We're not really rating them, but 
7 out of 10 for that. Maybe up to an 8. I'm just leaving a little bit of room because I don't know how good this is going to be. I would give that an 8.5. 8.5? And and okay. Maybe even a 9. So I'm not leaving yeah. much room for this to be better. No. Here, you take the first bite on okay. this one. All right. This one didn't quite fall apart as much, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. You said it looked denser. Maybe yeah. it is a little bit more dense. All right. A day in the making. Let's mm -hmm. see how it is. Mm -hmm. That is really good. Wow. There, that is really good. There is definitely a difference in taste between the two. This one is a little bit more dense, but it's not like um, not soft enough or not moist enough. It's mm -hmm. perfect. It's delicious. The crust I can actually taste. I have, yes, that's true. I do have one complaint though. Okay. Is that this is supposed to be a copycat recipe mm -hmm. and they do kind of have different flavor profiles. They, yes. they both taste really great, but they are different. If you want the exact Cheesecake Factory cheesecake taste. It's true, it's not there. Yeah. They're not like huge amount apart. They're pretty close, but there's definitely a difference in taste. So um, this one, the copycat one, tastes more kind of like cream cheese. Yes. Whereas the Cheesecake Factory one kind of tastes like powdered sugar. And that kind of seems like it's a bad thing, but like when I say powdered sugar, it's really not though. I was gonna say this one maybe is a tiny, it's not sour, but I would say maybe a little bit more sour than this yeah, one is over here. Point. Okay, so I'm gonna take one more little bite mm. of this mm -hmm. and then one more little bite of that. I'm okay. gonna find as many excuses as I can mm -hmm. to take more and more bites. By the okay. way, how much does one slice of Cheesecake Factory cheesecake cost? Oh yeah, so this was eight bucks, 7.95 plus tax. So there's one thing to take into account. This cost about say $25 to make, but mm -hmm. I bought all the most expensive ingredients. Yeah, that's true. So if we were to buy like the Great Value brand, which probably would have been just fine, it would have been maybe $15. But also this gets you a whole cheesecake. Mm. You have to remember well, yeah. that, so. So 15 versus eight for a whole cheesecake and a slice. Yeah, but then there's also time to take into account because this did take quite a while to make. It's about um, two hours, I would say, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so agree with you. This is not a perfect copycat because it doesn't taste just like this one. As far as which one I would prefer to eat, should we put mm. hand over favorite? Yeah. See which one you like better? So you just said this, but if you do really, really like the Cheesecake Factory flavor, I'm gonna have to say go with that one. Yeah, Because sure. this one, it just has a different flavor profile. It's still a great cheesecake, but if you're really looking for that exact flavor that Cheesecake Factory gets, Stick with the Cheesecake Factory. Yep. Okay, so as far as which one we prefer, mm -hmm. which one we would prefer to finish eating, maybe right now. Yeah. This one's bigger, so that's consideration. <laughs> yeah. All right, All right. No, we're just doing based off of flavor. All right, so hand over which one we prefer to finish yep. in three, two, one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Why would you like that one better? Um, I just like the flavor better. I think there's a slight uh, weird aftertaste hmm. with the copycat. It's not really bad. It's just kind of a weird taste to be left in your mouth afterward. Okay. I don't think it's bad at all. I like it a lot. And yeah, the Cheesecake Factory, I think I like the consistency a little bit more. Mm. It's actually less dense, which I thought I would like the more dense one better, but I actually prefer the fluffier Cheesecake Factory. Yeah, and definitely don't take this as this is dense because oh, I mean, it is not a dense yeah, cheesecake, no. um, but it is just a little bit more dense than the original. Yeah, I'm also not saying this is not good. This is really, really good cheesecake. Um, would still definitely recommend the recipe if you want to make a cheesecake. It'll Absolutely. be down in the description. Yep. It's just not an exact copy of Cheesecake Factory. And I actually do prefer yep. the Cheesecake Factory. But if you guys like to make uh, food at home, bake, uh, make your own cakes and whatnot, definitely recommend this. Oh yeah. Go ahead and make that. You're going to save yourself a whole bunch of money, mm -hmm. not necessarily time. No. But Certainly a great cheesecake to make at home if you are feeling in the mood for that. Before we end the video, we forgot to mention at the very beginning to subscribe to our channel. We are on the road to 1,000 subscribers, and if you've made it this far, please consider subscribing. It would really help support us. All right, this is going to be the end of the video. Be sure to leave it a like if you enjoyed, and we'll see you next week. See ya.